Uh, first question for the client. Why does Roblox have an FPS cap, and why is it against the rules to change that cap? Yeah, great. The giggles are nice for the first question. Yeah, so we are historically limited to 60 FPS. It's kind of how our internal system works. Uh, I'm not sure if it's against the rules to change this necessarily, but I'm sure <laughs> some devs have anti-exploit scripts that try to detect speed hacks and stuff like that. Uh, we do plan on fixing this for high refresh rate monitors, but it's a small enough percentage of the market that it never was super important for us to do, but I'm hoping that we can do this basically like next year. I think I said this last RDC, but I think, you know, next year is the year. <laughs> That's the real year. Just adding on to that, uh, I got this question offline too. If anyone is using the unofficial frame rate unlocker, I'm going to make a personal guarantee you will not be banned from Roblox. It's okay. <laughs> You're going to get some emails from CS later. All right. Are there any plans to support vector graphics in the near future? Who's doing it? arson has got the gaze. All right. Um, yeah, this is not really a studio question. It's more of an engine question. Like if engine supported vector graphics, the studio would have tools to do that. Uh, as well, we talked about this internally. Um, it's it's a thing where there's a lot of time that we would need to devote to supporting this because it's hard to do vector graphics right. Graphics hardware does not work with vector graphics. It works with raster graphics. So again, like not very high priority now, but we have talked about some features kind of like this that may happen as part of our UI and app evolution. Great. All right. Will you be improving the editor to be compatible? Competitive with VS Code. A lot of features are missing from it that encourages me to use Studio plus Roho plus VS Code. Um, the short answer is yes. We are actively working. We have a huge project right now to do a lot of script editor improvements. Um, so a lot of the functionality that you'll see in other editors, we're going to be adding to Studio. If there's anything specific you want, please make a dev form feature request. Now is the time, and we'll get it into the pipeline. Great. Yeah, keep submitting quests. And uh, I'll add that I know that one of the favorite features and recently is Deep Tab 9. I believe that's one of the reasons why uh, you're looking into VS Code. Assume that we are looking at all possible options to make our editor better. Great. Will there, will there be any improvements on the performance of Studio? I love this one comes up. As I and many other developers on Roblox crash due to big maps and low-end PCs. Uh, short answer, absolutely. So one of the things that you guys saw over and over today is the fact that we want to support mega games with like lots of players and lo very, very large worlds. So we would love to hear from you. Uh, we are actively looking, tracking all metrics possible to figure out all the crashes. We never want to crash, right? Uh, so just come talk to us and we'll figure something out because this is number one priority for us. Oh, it's Bereza lurking in the shadows. All right, Bereza, hit us with a hard one. Don't worry, this should be an easy one. Um, <laughs> I'm currently using messaging service in my game to implement guilds with cross-server messaging, um, chat, you know, kicking someone from your guild, promoting them and whatnot. And I found there's a limitation of uh, 10, 24 characters, I believe, which wasn't documented. I had to test to figure it out. I have two questions. One is, uh, when will messaging service be testable in studio so I don't have to deploy it to my live game to test it? And are there any plans to increase the 1024 character limit? Yeah, um, great question. So the first part was there's an undocumented limit. We'll document that immediately. Um, and then there was a question around when can I test in studio? Um, the answer is probably within the next month. We're actively working on this right now. We want to make sure that you can test in studio without affecting your live game and then when you do publish uh, you can also test crossover messaging so really soon um, and then there is was there one other part of your question yeah are there any plans to raise the limit from 1024 yeah so with this system unfortunately we have to balance um, between the size of data and how fast the guarantee is of people getting it uh, we want to make sure that we don't overload the system and slow everything down so that's why we chose the limit of 1024 we could look at expanding it in the future um, so I'll talk to you about your specific use case and see what we can do. Great. Let's, uh, well, it is a physics related question. Now, feel free to introduce yourself as well. If you'd like to see your username. All right. I am in 22 and my question is, is there any plan to implement some form of dynamic water in the future? Um, we really want to do this. It's really hard. Not a lot of people know this, but, uh, in 20, 
2012, or yeah, I think in 2012 we actually built a prototype with cellular, cellular automata based on the old voxel um, water system. We never shipped it. There were significant challenges in terms of performance and also networking kind of interactions with that. We want to do this. We don't know how yet. So I think it's a thing that will be on our kind of like long-term vision, but not in the short-term roadmap. Well, thank you anyway. Great. <laughs> We try, we try. Are there any plans to improve teleporting between players' places? Improve teleporting players between places. You know, you got it. Players, places, teleporting. Yeah, so once upon a time, <laughs> once upon a hack week, maybe two or three years ago, one of our great engineers, Val, built a prototype of seamless teleports. So you'd be in one place, and you'd actually see the next place before you teleported there, so you could walk smoothly between places. We proved that it's possible, and this is definitely part of our long-term rope, it's not on our short-term roadmap. Great. Uh, I'm Encoded Lua, Justin. Um, I was wondering when, uh, about an ETA on particles in viewport frames. I mean, I know that they were like just released within the past few months. Uh, they're really good so far. I was just wondering if particles were gonna be supported in like the next few months. Um, the answer to the next few months is no, because for this to be supported in the next few months, we should already be working on this and we aren't. Um, viewport frames use a slightly different rendering pipeline, which is why you have a small subset of features. We are slowly expanding this, like we shipped uh, support for lighting controls and viewport frames, I think a week or two ago. So you can expect updates to generally happen, but um, if a lot of people have the use case of particles specifically, uh, you should make a feature request in that forum. Other people can weigh in with their feedback and then we can prioritize this accordingly. Right. Thank you. Uh, when will we see TOTP to factor off rather than email based? Sure. Um, I believe we I had we a project around providing a more secure form of authentication. I don't know where that went, but <laughs> this is something we are looking into doing. Good reminder, whoever that was. I'll add to that that um, yeah. we totally understand the use case for developers to kind of lock down their account be 100% secure. So at some point we will do this. It's not actually in the roadmap. We need to basically follow up with you with, after we talk to the team. Cool. Uh, my username is 144Hertz. So I just want to say thank you for <laughs> the word on the FPS unlocker. It's because... close to your heart. <laughs> yes. Okay, so I've been doing a lot of experimentation with the new um, height map importer system for terrain. And first of all, I love it, thank you so much. Um, but I've been running into an issue where I'm making a, a terrain, a lot of terrain maps that have a lot of height variation. Now, um, currently, right, the importer is limited to uh, colors between white and black, right? Which means there's only 256 height values between those. So if I make a, a terrain world that's like really high, I'm starting to run into like a stair-stepping issue with that, right? And I'm wondering if, uh, there will be any more supported formats for the height map importer so I can get more precision on those uh, height values on that height map importer. <laughs> so we have not, I don't think we have discussed this internally at the office, but the use case sounds valid, so we will definitely explore this and I'll see if Arsene wants to add something. The use case is super valid. The implementation might be really complex because these images are now uploaded through our usual pipeline. So if you are looking for something like TIFF support with like 16-bit colors, like it makes total sense for us to do this, but it might be really hard for us to actually implement this. Okay, thank you. Question, when will character replication be able to handle 100 plus players? And is this an issue with the humanoid system primarily? <laughs> take your time take your time um so the answer to the when should be this year we are working on a project that kind of requires uh, a complex really large map 100 people like 20 vehicles or 30 vehicles or i don't know the number keeps changing and things need to work well things don't work well just yet but we are working on new algorithms like right now um, that should make the motion much much better and you heard, Dave, the vision is to get 600 players in a game if possible. Yeah, 600 with smooth movement will not happen by the end of the year. <laughs> <laughs> but that, in the future. All right, so um, I'm Fennec Pa, and I'm wondering if you're ever going to add custom night skyboxes. Great question. Custom yes. night skyboxes? <laughs> 
night sky boxes. Um, as of right now, you cannot um, customize any night sky boxes, but you can change what users will see like in daylight. But as of right now, there's no custom night sky boxes, so I was just gonna wonder. Yeah, so... Yes, there's stars. <laughs> <laughs> and they can change the moon, I guess, but... We, our big vision is to move to dynamic skies, which includes night skies. So I think we're going to probably put most of our effort in there. We do recognize there is a little deficit when it comes to the terrestrial objects in the sky. So maybe there's something tactical we could do in the meantime. Thank For you. celestial objects specifically, we have discussed doing this, but again, it like it never become it never became big enough for us to do at this point in time. So yeah, I think we do procedural sky first, and then if there's still uh, necessity for other things, we'll do them as well. Okay. I'm Slash Gamar. I'm an animator, and so far for the Roblox animation, like the default that you use, it's not really that good. I actually animate in Blender and I put it into Roblox because it looks ten times better and looms better. And this is for uh, Matt. Someone told me to find you. Do you guys have any plans <laughs> to make the uh, the plugin better just by default? Like better, better IK, easier movements, spawns? Um, uh, yeah, we're still working through the exact details. Um, I think what I can say is that we're currently in the process of a ground up rewrite of the animation editor. Um, we've heard that feedback. Um, we look at the telemetry. We realize that it's not a tool that most people use to create new animation. Um, uh, in fact, the most popular way is actually a third uh, plugin from the community, um, <laughs> not not our own tool. So, uh, so we are in the process of of, of rebuilding that from the ground up, um, and the things you described are absolutely on the roadmap. So, much improved IK, a much more flexible IK, um, uh, and different types of curve support. Hey, Mimi Dev here. Um, I've got a question about a Hack Week project that came out this year. It was reflections on parts with players moving in their reflections. Is that happening? Um, so it's not fully happening just yet. The uh, There's this project called Futures Bryant 2.5, right? Uh, and part of this is improved reflections, but they're not localized in the sense that if you're in a room, you don't see reflection from other objects in the room yet. We recognize this as a problem, but we don't have an efficient solution. The Hack Week project was basically not really realistic for us to fully ship in that form, but uh, it's a big issue and it will be bigger with the new materials. So we'll have to find ways to solve this.